time. This will be a Declan Goff generated uh, order. And uh, Declan, we are going to transition because training camp is starting. Press conferences today. Vikings actually first practice no pads on Wednesday. Give me your Tuesday pecking order on Mackie and Judd. This pecking order, by the way, is sponsored by my friends at Aquaside and Aquaside Pellets. You can get that nasty lake weed and algae removed. You can remove those bullpen arms. Well, I don't actually, I don't know if I can remove the slappy bullpen arms, but I do know I can I, I know remove that, that lake weed and that algae that you don't want to step on, right? Like if, if you're opposing like team, your you don't you don't want that. That will kill a vibe. So there are Aquaside Pellets. is a safe product registered with the EPA and the DNR. Go check them out, Aquaside.com to learn more. That's Aquaside.com to learn more. All right, Judd, I bring you five players I am excited about to watch uh Boy. this season for the vikings and by the way i'm omitting kirk cousins i am omitting yeah. justin jefferson even I dalvin that. cook um i i know who those guys are so these are like five pecking order names of the guys who i'm really curious to see how they perform throughout training camp and then mostly importantly how they perform throughout the regular season so i'll start from five and I'll work my way to the bottom okay this one the fifth one probably won't surprise you because i think he's on everyone's uh, watch list, and if he can develop into who he's supposed to be, then this is going to be a great thing for the Vikings. Irv Smith Jr. Is Irv yes. Smith Jr. indeed healthy? Is he indeed going to be the tight end that we've been waiting to break out? He had a great rookie campaign, up and down sophomore campaign, was having a hell of a training camp this time a year ago, tears his meniscus towards the end of it, misses the entire regular season, um, now in a contract year. In the age of tight ends, and I know Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay's offense doesn't really necessarily prioritize tight ends it's still a very valuable position they have a freak of the nature athlete and herb smith jr so number five for me judd herb smith jr agree completely and it feels like um the clock is ticking here a bit too because this is what is this the third consecutive year that we've thought herb smith is this it is gonna break out uh and just a flashback to what i saw in training camp last summer like he looked special like with what they were doing and that, that, you know, obviously now is the previous regime. But with what they were doing with him, it looks special. So, yeah, I, I think that if he is healthy and he can produce and play, um, he is probably going to give Kevin O'Connell something offensively, a weapon that Sean McVay didn't, didn't have with the Rams and will give you the ability to put wrinkles in your offense that teams won't get from from the Rams film. So yes, I am extremely curious. And if he gets hurt again, I'm not saying I'm totally out, but oh I am God. like, I don't know what's going on yeah. here. Like he yeah. might not be able to to stay on the field ever. You either draft another one or you find someone on the free agent pool in March. And you can you can find five power right. place. But yes, I'm, I'm curious where he goes. All right. Uh sticking on the offense with number four for me. Yep. Second year player Christian Darisaw. So yes. I, I think Darisaw's solid. I, I, even though it was a 10-game stanza after he after he battled his, his core muscle injury for the first six, seven games, when he got in there, he was solid. And I expect him to still be a very serviceable and, honestly, above serviceable tackle for the Vikings going forward. But we also fell into a trap with Matt Khalil right after the rookie year where he was just amazing. And then he battled some injuries and some ineffectiveness, and he fell completely off the wagon. Uh, didn't even get a second contract with the Vikings. But this is a very, very important position at left tackle. And I, I think the Vikings have him here. I, I, I don't think Christian Derrissaw is going to fall off a cliff or that 10 games that he played in was a fluke, but he has to prove it again. And I think the, the protecting Kirk's blind side here is huge. They have a very good right tackle in Brian O'Neill. If you can mm-hmm. get your tackle solidified, I mean, how many teams can legitimately say we have a right and left tackle solidified? We know who yes. they are. You, you know how, how much of a yes. luxury that is yes. from an offensive line standpoint? So. I'm excited to watch him play and I'm excited to watch him, you know, just be healthy this time around and not have to worry about his coach throwing him underneath the bus. So number four for me, Christian Derriso. Uh Yes. A thousand percent. Yes. Be- because I'm not saying that the offensive line is perfect, but I will caution you. No one's is like, mm-hmm. like that. Is, th- this is the Vikings were far too cavalier, m- much like with the twins bullpen problems. We're far too cavalier previously in the Spielman years of trying to draft and prioritize this position group. That being said, when you are now starting off, in my opinion, with the tackle set, how huge is that? Like, that is enormous. And and look, two years back, Riley Reef was pretty good, but we knew that he was older 
like he was not going to be a long-term solution at left tackle protecting Kirk Cousins' blind side. So, yeah, I am... I haven't been this confident about some very important spots on the offensive line in a long time. It's not perfected yet, but I do... I feel this way, Dex. I feel like the excuses are dissipating there. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there's not as many, yeah, but the left tackle couldn't do this and that, blah, 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 blah. I feel like, I feel like there's still question marks. And again, every team has them, but they're all a whole lot less than they probably were three years back. Transition to the defensive side of the ball now. Actually, my next three players are all on the defensive side of the ball. I love this. For three, two, and one. Love it. The second name that is uh, that is named Smith on this list, Harrison Smith. Number three is Harrison Smith for me. So a veteran safety who is probably going to the Vikings ring of honor, could potentially maybe be a professional pro football Hall of Fame player if he continues to play an elite level into his 30s. And I feel like this position of safety, you are allowed to do that. It's easier to get there than other positions when you transition to your 30s. But he, he came down to earth a little bit, I feel like, last year. And the, the reason I am so obsessed, I think, with how he plays in 2022 mm -hmm. is when Kevin O'Connell at his introductory press conference used the buzzword illusion of complexity. And he was oh, talking mostly that. on that on, on the offensive side. Okay. Yep. Well, here's the thing. Defensively, Harrison Smith's career is the illusion of complexity. Is yep. he going to be dropped back? Is he going to be on the line? Is he going to blitz you? Is what the hell play is the he going to do? Play the football sounder, baby. Don't I, talk I, like I, this I and not play the sound. I, I can't play it because I don't have all the bells and whistles, classic Judge Zolgad. I can't do it from home right now. But well, I can, then I'll I can do tell it. you football. football. There you go. Uh, but but I will say he his entire career is that illusion of complexity. Aaron yes. Rodgers talks about him being one of the toughest players he has to play against twice a year, by the way. And Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw away, just throw praise at any player in the NFL for how, how long he has done it. So can Harrison Smith refine that next gear in this illusion of complexity with Ed Donatel and Kevin O'Connell to a degree and kind of now get back to the player, not that was declining last season, but yep. still be a very good player and one of the better safeties in the NFL. You put that perfectly. That You put that absolutely good because, yes, that's the thing. And, look, they're going to use, and Smith is probably the linchpin for this. The Vikings, I think, are going to use their safeties in multiple ways. And I keep saying, I think there's going to be, and this is just total guess, I think there's going to be a package because it makes perfect sense where you take a linebacker off the field and actually go three safeties. A scene can come down and he can blow guys up. But Smith, Smith is the brains behind the operation. And I, I think you're right. I think that Harrison Smith stands to benefit as much as anybody from what the scheme is going to be and how he, he's used. And the confusion, or in the case, your term, illusion of complexity, I think it's going to bring wrinkles that are going to, um, how can I put this? rejuvenate Harrison Smith because he hasn't lost his smarts. He might not be the same player physically, but he is incredibly intelligent. And I think that this is going to take advantage of exactly that. So, so yeah, he, he, he's the most established player on this list here. He's been around forever. He's a Viking, like I said, Vikings bring a honor player, but I think there's a next year to him. I really do. I, I even in, in his late thirties or as he gets into his thirties, I should say, I think yep. there's a next gear to his game. So he's number three for me. And actually, I lied. There's a third Smith on this list. Number two for me, Zadarius Smith. Mm -hmm. So Zadarius Smith, who um, was wreaking havoc on Kirk Cousins not too long ago with the Green Bay Packers. I believe sacked him like three or four times in that home game here at U.S. Bank Stadium in 2019. He just ate him for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, Zadarius Smith and Daniel Hunter are the linchpins and the most important piece of this defensive line. Uh, the cornerbacks are, are sparse here. Cam Dancer might be great, but man, after that... I don't feel great about Shannon Sullivan. I don't feel great about Pat P on the field necessarily. Um, the linebacking core has questions. Uh, it is on Zadarius Smith and Daniel Hunter, and this might not be fair, but the pressure, pun intended, is on them to create the pressure on the opposing quarterbacks. If they can't get after the quarterback, this defense is just going to stink again. It, it's just flat out going to be terrible. So you can mask some of that with two elite pass rushers. I, I know what I'm getting in Daniel. Even though he's only played eight games last year, I know who he is. I'm not necessarily ex I'm not not excited to watch him. I'm more curious if Zadarius Smith is indeed healthy and him and Daniel Hunter create this bash brother tandem on the defensive line where they're lining up inside, outside, left and right, wherever they're going to pressure the quarterback. Right. Those two together 
are so important to the Vikings defense being serviceable again in 2022. So I, I think among those two, Hunter and Zadarius Smith, Zadarius Smith's back concerns me the most. Yep. Like, I think Very. Hunter will be back. Now, Now he's coming off the, the same thing, if I'm not mistaken, that Anthony Barr did last year and Dumba did in, in the fight with Kachuk. So that it is a little bit scary there. Um, but backs really scare me. And, like, backs can flare up arbitrarily. If Hunter's not at full strength, he can still play, right? Like, un unless he r ruptures it again, he's going to play. So, Zadarius Smith, if your back barks at you, you really can't play. But I'm with you, and I think the potential for these two as teammates standing oh. up to get after quarterbacks It'd be fun. Um, if you were to ask me the top three to five potential fun fun things to watch from the 2022 Vikings, if all things go right, that's in there. Like it's it's cousins to Jefferson probably atop that list because I think that that could be a lot of fun to watch. But Zadaria Smith and Daniil Hunter and Hunter now standing up, getting after quarterbacks could yeah. be a nightmare. So yeah. Um, my curiosity on Zadaria Smith, not is is he going to be successful? It's how much is he going to play? And again, I'll go back to this: back injuries always scare me. Yep, those like are, I those never feel I never feel Dex like with a back problem and an athlete that you can exhale, right? Yeah. Like, okay, he's shown it now. You know, backs and knees and stuff flare yeah. up at weird times. Concussion heads and backs, man. Like that's like, another good it, one. It, like like it, shoulders are only, my opinion, specific to pitchers. Like yeah. if um, agreed, yeah. If You're... if Harrison Smith suffered a shoulder injury, I'm not too concerned that he can't come back and be the player that he used to be. I'm not trying to say it won't be difficult. Right. I'm just saying it doesn't doesn't I'm like it doesn't scare me. If you have concussion problems or you have yeah. back problems, yeah. I'm worried. I'm worried. There's well, so back problems you can't play through. You can't exactly. Like a concussion, you can sort of try and lie a little bit, right? Right, I got exactly. my bell rung, but I'm good, coach. And they're probably like, yeah, you should pr probably go see the doctor. But back problems, there ain't no fake in that. No, there isn't. Especially right, so, hit, especially in that job. So my so, number one player to watch here. Um, yes, yeah, Might surprise you. Might surprise okay. you. I'm going to go on. The, I'm staying on the defensive side of the ball. But okay. uh, I was talking to our Vikings vent line guests on Sunday, and it kind of got me excited uh, with this idea. Hunter? And it kind of it dovetails into num from my number three on my list. Nope, okay. not, not Neil Hunter. My number one player to watch, as my boy Vinny Boy is yawning no. here, he's getting bored of my list. I said I'm the sorry, punter. Vinny. Oh, not the punter. No, not the punter, Judd. Number one, Lewis Seam. Yeah. My number one okay. player is Lewis yeah. Seam. I want to see what this rookie can do. And to be honest, the the he there's no one better to learn from from a guy like Harrison Smith, who I'm sure is very excited to work with him. And look, Cam Bynum played well and admirably when when Harrison Smith was out last season. And how they use Lewis Seen, in my opinion, is is the baby version of him. He's also illusion of complexity, right? A guy who can hit super, super hard. He can yep. maybe drop back in coverage. Um, with the cornerback room, again, being decimated, it's going to be on these safeties and Harrison Smith and Lewis Seen and maybe even Cam Bynum um, to make up for those deficiencies. So rookie Lewis Seen, who I think we're just, we kind of not forget about, but because he went 32nd in the draft and we, they traded back multiple times and all this Talented. noise, he's an unbelievable player. Uh, so okay. number one on my list, why I'm most excited to watch for the 2022 Vikings that aren't established stars or aren't established players on offense yep. is Lewis Seen. So from five through one, Herb Smith, Christian Derrissaw, Harrison Smith, Zadarius Smith, and Lewis Seen. Great list. I'll say this. So where I, I don't think I disagree, but where I don't think I am as um, as pessimistic as you are at this point, just because we don't know. I think when it comes to the cornerbacks, I'm more curious. Like if Dantzler's good, that's huge. Yeah. It, and and I, Phil's more sold on Dantzler than I am. I feel like I'm more sold on D Dantzler possibly than you are. But the reality is this: last year was such a wasted year because like he got into Zim's doghouse clearly in training camp, and I think he was upset. And and in retrospect, now I don't blame him, but. If you were told Bashad Breedland has been signed and is going to start in front of you, Declan, I think you'd be like, hold on a second here. I'm watching Bashad. A lot yeah. of talk, a lot exactly. of talk, little action. Um, my curiosity on Peterson, because he's an incredibly smart guy. I like yep. he's a, yes. he, and, and, and he was a great player at one time. 
my curiosity there is, is this the year that he goes off the cliff? Right. Or can he give you one more year? I think if he gives you one more year, that's fine. Shannon Sullivan, here's the sad thing there. All right? I'm about to make a very sad statement. Oh, God. You can't be worse than Mackenzie Alexander was last year because he was awful. I think he might have been the worst graded PFF nickel corner in the NFL. That's right. I think he was. So I get where you're coming from on the corners. I just am curious like can booth play like if booth can start to right. play well yeah um you know that changes things i i don't know at this point in time there you can't consider th- these guys to be shut down corners so to your point you're right the pass rush has to be good it has to be good um but i do think that there is a little bit more opportunity with those corners especially if the young ones develop where the transition from 2022 to 23 could be could be successful i'm not guaranteeing a damn thing if peterson goes off the cliff though that is a problem because i don't know that you've got a guy who's set to step in there right yeah i I think it's your weakest position group i really do i I think of all the offensive defense i think cornerback is the one that scares me the most um i i I know you can make a case well there's a lot of interior guard options but they they could not be effective but at least there's depth there there's depth there and i could be proven wrong in training camp and i i have a better um idea that a guard is going to be able to step in and be average than I do Shannon Sullivan, Patrick Peterson, unproven Andrew Booth trying to get his teeth cut here that yep. they can step in and be that serviceable option. I just don't know. And I, I think teams are going to pass all day on the Vikings. And again, that's why I think that defensive line, they have to get after the quarterback. If they don't, if they're league average or worse, honestly, at getting after the quarterback, this Vikings defense is going to be bottom five again. Three safeties, baby, and blow guys up. That's hell yeah. That's Illusion my of advice. complexity. Don't Illusion don't, don't take complexity. penalties. Lewis scene, but blow guys up. All right, we're done. Phil back uh, tomorrow for a write that down Wednesday on both uh, Mackie and mm-hmm. Judd and PD as well. Take us home, Dex. You, you've got, got more to probably throw out there than I do, so go ahead. Hit the subscribe button for Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment. This is Mackie and Judd.